Human history, there's never been a moment where we've had mapping technology like this. We're starting to see an entirely new kind of map, a living map that lets you see the pulse of a city and lets people in real time start sharing what's going on around them, capturing a story of a dynamic generation. Today, you can go on Snapchat and look at the Snap Maps powered by Mapbox and get a sense of what's happening right here. And together, start defining what's happening around you and who you want to be. The power to make maps is the power to define a narrative. Today, that power belongs to all of us. Today, we are all map makers. And through these maps, we tell a powerful human story. And now in our future story, our power to build human maps are going to use, be used by machines at scale at this pivotal moment, right when the robots and automation start becoming a core part of our world. Look, since the beginning of time, we have been explorers. In, in our quest as, as humans has been to discover, measure, build worlds around us. In the map, the map has been the living document of humanity. And now, it's becoming live in real time. So this is what makes Slush special. We're builders, we're dreamers, and, and we're coming together to build a better world. We, we don't work with technology because it's the new new, right? We, we work with technology to leverage it, to build a world that we want to see. Look, I didn't start making maps like this. I started monitoring deforestation in the Congo. I started looking at floods spread across Pakistan and satellite imagery, trying to get an understanding of the amount of damage or where malaria outbreaks were happening and where we could put clinics. Project by project, we needed better tools to do our job. So we built them. But where we were working, the map, the map was blank. My, my first time into Kabul in, uh, in 2009, there was literally Ring Road and Jalalabad Road coming up it, the, the city was an intersection. You know, here you're going, you're, you're going to actually try to map an election, and, and there's, there's, no, there's, no, there's no context. So we were, we were a group of developers, and uh, we got good at making maps. Fast forward to today, we've mapped the whole world and built a platform, a platform that's being used by more than 350 million people touching our maps every day. Whether this is like Snapchat, or waking up to check the weather, or watching your groceries delivered on Instacart. And here's what's special. Every time somebody touches one of these maps, the code in these apps is collecting anonymous aggregated data back. And in real time, we're collecting latitude, longitude, timestamp, elevation, directionality. This, this is the kind of stuff that we're able to map the world live. So here we are, we're, we're building out this network of decentralized sensors. Our phones, every time people touch the map, we are the ones powering this living map. And all of this is happening as we're entering this era of robotic intelligence and infinite data. So 
what kind of maps do robots need? And how are we going to build those maps? As we leverage location data to unleash human potential, Mapbox is building the location data layer for an entirely new world. This, this is Mapbox's frontier. Maps created by humans for machines to orchestrate symphonies of automation in transportation, industry, and learning. Look, each of us have memories of, of, of touching a map, whether that's you know, touching the globe for the first time or getting in your car and unfolding it as you, as you get, ready for, get ready for a road trip. Traditionally, the map existed to tell you where you were going. Today, the map puts humans in an even more powerful role. No longer does the map revolve around the world's coordinate system. It revolves around ours. We're the blue dot, and the map is literally created around us. So in this human-centric model, our command over machine maps is going to unlock this next era of human opportunity. This means we need to push beyond what traditional boundaries of a map have even been thought of and, and build a more perfect map of our world and its human activities, commerce, the environment around us, connections with each other. So with more perfect maps, we're not just talking about maps and apps and, 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 and for cars. We want the whole machine ecosystem to be running more efficiently, to build a more equitable, stable, and prosperous world. On a technical level, our vision at Mapbox is a race forward to where we know maps are going. This is, this is beyond mobile. I want everybody to just like shred uh, the traditional concepts you have of what, what a map looks like. Because we're starting to operate in, in a mixed reality paradigm, where real-time, reality-grade location data is going to orient everything from gaming to automated vehicles to logistics. I'm honored to be here today with all of you in Tokyo, uh, the, and uh, honored to have the support of uh, the SoftBank team. Uh, they, they see this new world, and we're building, it, we're building it together. I want to speak a little bit about the history of maps, and I, really to, to understand where we're going, I want to pull back and talk a little bit about how we got here and what that relationship has been between humans and the map. So let's, let's take a first look at, at why maps existed. This was about documenting exploration. These maps were powered by our intense desire to know. And, and they were owned by, by these elites, right? This, this elite group of people where the data was all locked away the, in these static snapshots in back rooms. Many of the maps in the early days, as we now know, were, they were wrong, right? Um, but over time, we, we iterated. And, and it's that nature of, of map making that is ingrained in humanity's curiosity. Each new map became better and more complete and more representative of the diversity of the needs that we had and more equipped to meet the needs that we have today. Fast forward, we've mapped the whole world. And now that map is oriented around us, focused on the context around us. Once the digital maps got into our car, we, we stopped wayfinding. We stopped using paper maps. Once maps got onto our phones, we, we actually stopped using peripheral, map, uh, peripheral tech in, in the cars. Here's where things get interesting. 
This dawn of sensors gave humans the chance to document our exploration, to translate our discovery into data. And as this network of sensors just starts to skyrocket, this footprint expands exponentially. So maps are going to transform the function of just providing directions and, and knowing what's happening around you. Where we're going, the location data layer is the operating system for machines that will unleash an entirely new era of human discovery, enterprise, and industry. Today, we are all map makers. Every human transit, every purchase, every memory created, every connection shared is tied to location. We move around in our daily life, and, and it's this motion that creates an invisible map. This is a map of our lives, and at scale, this is a map of human activity. And powered by Mapbox technology, this is the roadmap of machine-driven future and tremendous innovation in industry. So look, maps got us to where we are today. It's that human desire to explore that has let us build this new world that is pulsing around us. The question now is, what, what is the map of the new world? This is not about a map anymore. This is about the opportunities that location data is going to unlock. So to understand where the platform is going, let's start with our human foundation, the one million registered developers we have building on top of Mapbox. Solving human challenges is in Mapbox's DNA. But we, we created Mapbox to serve communities of people on the ground solving urgent real world needs. Those were famines in Somalia, elections in Sudan, hurricanes in Houston. We knew that the map could empower professionals to save lives and the environment around them. And by creating a platform, we gave them better tools to make data-driven decisions. So combining their data, their on-the-ground reality, with location data, we could inform them how to work better. And it's been that relationship with developers over the years that's influenced our platform and changed how we've built. And now today, those one million developers touching our SDKs, building on our APIs, are funneling a level of data back that's helping us make a more perfect map. So whether it's apps like Snapchat or you saw some of the watches like Cisco or you know, weather terminals by, by IBM, we're touching over 350 million users a month. It's these people touching the map that are constantly feeding back live data, live mapping the world. They are the humans that are at the heart of the map. So what, is, what does this start to mean for autonomous vehicles? The map is no longer just providing directions, right? The map is the propulsion for the vehicle. So if I tell you to go to a bar, uh, or better said, look, there's a go to the bar, a bar's on the corner, um, you'll notice that what I really meant is there's a door on the corner, and you're going to be able to analyze that it's, that it's a bar. Up until now, we have been the location interface for maps. And as we start being removed from that experience, the level of precision, accuracy, and timely updates are, are insane. So for an, an autonomous vehicle to move people around with this level of precision, the details have to go deeper. We are at the dawn of a re of reality grade data. 
that requires reality grade precision to know where everything in the world is. And, and we're in a world where the level of change is accelerating and the map needs to be more live than ever. So this is not just about a, powering our autonomous strategy. This is about powering an entire world that is changing more and more radically. Take a look at the transportation and logistics. Our core mission is to help people and goods move more efficiently, connecting people with things they need. Every single vehicle plugged into the Mapbox network creates a better map through that data feedback loop. So look, wh while the Atlas in the back seat is beautiful, it, it, was also, it was also static. Maps drawn by hand lost out to maps drawn by sensors. And we, we can be nostalgic about that past, but the upsides for safety, productivity, and industry cannot be argued with. Sensor-driven maps are going to be an enormous win for humanity. Today, Mapbox collects over 225 million miles of anonymized data every single day. That means we have more sensors on the road today than the entire auto industry is going to have by 2020. And these sensors, this is what's painting the more perfect map. Traffic on the road, whether a new road's being built, did a detour come out overnight. As the real world changes, your maps in your applications need to change. And it's this global sensor network that's literally emitting hundreds of millions of pings a minute that's feeding back to power the context around us. The future of transportation and logistics requires a level of precision that is only possible through this decentralized network of sensors. And, it, and it's not just about the real world. As we start looking at augmented reality, the, the future is being built on layers of timely data that are going to be powered by these maps, but you're never going to see the map. It's the data behind the map that's actually changing context and being streamed live directly in to change the gameplay or change the context of what you're looking at. There's no room for error here. You're getting down to the level that when you pick up your phone, what you're looking at is right in front of you. Having that context needs to align perfectly. And you might want to pull out your phone and immediately spawn your own virtual world and the people around you join that world. The notion of a map is influencing your interaction as much as it is a visual component anymore. So to reach this frontier and to drive faster at updating this, f this feed of data, we need, more we need more sensors. We need to become part of more apps. We need to empower you all to build more crazy technology and applications. Because the more people that use the map, the smarter the map becomes. So to conclude, the first maps documented our world. And in, in, in documenting the world, it also made that the, it also captured the reality at that time. By harnessing Mapbox, we're giving a community of more than a million developers and a larger reach of 350 plus million people touching the map, the ability to make that map to own that reality. So let me end with, if, if we can make our own maps, we can also make new realities. I invite all of you to join us at Mapbox, where we're building a new world together. Thank you very much.